Hi guys, people throw the term game changer around a lot these days. I might be one of those people. However, once in a while, a product comes along that is an actual game changer. And this is one of those products. This is the Hollyland Mars M1. And what you are looking at is a completely wireless monitor. That is just a battery on the back. It is connected to nothing and it doesn't stop there. Look at this. This is my phone. As you can see, it's grayer because it's showing the log footage that I'm recording right now. But this is my phone and this is my iPad. Highland is now your complete wireless system. Oh, and it can be set up as a monitor, a transmitter, or a receiver. We should talk about this. So first of all, big thanks to Hollyland for sending this thing out for review. They also sent a Mars 4K transmitter only. That is what is on my camera right now, sending the signal to this guy. See, here's the thing. You can put this on your camera and send the signal to other receivers or another one of these Mars M1s, or you can send it to any of the Hollyland devices. It works with all of the Mars devices, 4K, the 400S, and the 300. It's one of the things I love about Hollyland. They think of the entire ecosystem when they make a product to make sure that it works not just with itself, but with the other products that they sell. And if you don't know Hollyland, they are an absolutely fantastic company that are making huge strides, especially in the wireless genre. I, I use their microphones all the time. The Lark 150 is my favorite lav mic of all time. I use the Lark M1 lavalier all the time for running and gunning, but their wireless transmission systems, that is really what's made a big name for them because they're extremely well built. They're very reliable. They're basically like a budget form of a Teradex system. And a lot of people, especially people with smaller rigs or smaller budgets, are switching over to the Hollyland systems because why not? Their wireless systems are just as good as anything and they are much, much cheaper. It's got a nice 5.5 inch touchscreen and it's a very responsive touchscreen. It looks great. Love the resolution. It's a thousand nits, so it's plenty bright. You're out there shooting your beach scenes, this guy will be fine. And you can go 450 feet wirelessly. If in line of sight, 450 feet, I don't know who needs to be that far away from the camera, but you can do it. And I tested it out. It does work a little bit further than 450 feet. So you can believe what they're saying in the specs. And even though it plays well with the other wireless transmitters and receivers for Hollyland, I think the major strength of this guy is his app. So here is how I would use this particular monitor on set. I would put this on my camera and use it as a monitor. I would set it up to be a transmitter. Then I would take four iPads, four iPads, and send the signal to four different iPads and hand it to all those looky-loos, those nosy people on the set that want to look over your shoulder and breathe their garlic breath into your face. You're like, no, no, no. Here, take this iPad and walk all the way across the room. And that is what I think I will do with this all of the time. Another thing that you can do is put one of these on top of your camera then grab another one, then you have such a great wireless system because you have two professional monitors, one on the camera, one where you can walk around and look at it elsewhere. Also, if you're using the app, you can actually live stream. You type in the address into the app and then you can live stream. So you can stick this on your camera, look at your gorgeous face, set up your shot just right, live stream there on your phone in the middle of the desert, as long as you have a signal of some kind. Whoa, fantastic. So now let's talk about the build quality. This thing is as solidly made as anything. It is the most solid monitor that I have. It is not metal, but it is an extremely hard plastic. It feels like you could throw this off a building and it would not be affected. It has an SDI input. It has a DC input and a DC output. It has USB as well and a headphone jack. It has two mounting points and it's antennas. Oh, I love these antennas. They're so small and sturdy. A lot of times you get wireless type devices. You have those big long rabbit ear antennas and you feel like you're going to crack them off if you know something goes wrong and you put them in your bag the wrong way. I love these little tiny stubs. Of course, it has HDMI in and an HDMI out so you can loop out your signal as you'd want to do. This is the Mars 4K transmitter that they sent. Now you don't have to get that with the Mars M1, but it is the most cost effective solution. You can just buy one Mars 4K transmitter and then one Mars M1 and you have a great 
wireless setup that will cover you for most purposes. Or if you don't need a monitor at all, you can just use the Mars 4K transmitter and the app and send it out to four different devices. This Mars 4K transmitter is built the same way, extremely solid and rugged. It has HDMI, SDI, a place for DC power. It has a little button and a screen here on the side to scroll through on and off switch. And of course you can power it through Sony NPF batteries, which is what I do most of the time. Now the latency of this guy is 0.08 seconds. It's pretty low, it's a bit longer the more things you connect. So uh, right now, since I have the 4K, the Mars 4K connected to the camera, there's gonna be a slightly longer lag in terms of the latency, but honestly, to me, that is still very usable. I have no problem with that at all. But let's check it when I wire it straight into the camera. Let's do that now. So this is the latency connected straight to the camera. As you can see, it is fantastic. This is very usable for focus pulling. So uh, no worries as long as you're connected straight to your camera. If you're connected to another wireless device, like another Mars M1 without hardwired in with the HDMI, you're gonna have a little bit longer of a lag. Now what I did was I had to switch this over to the transmitter function instead of the receiver function. It rebooted and then I plugged in the cable and we are good to go. If I want it to become a uh, receiver again, I have to do that process. Okay, so let me show you what we're working with here, Inception style. You bring up your menu here, you have your uh, histogram, you have your vector scope, you have your waveform. You can move those around the screen, but you can't resize them, which is too bad. And here is the major problem. This here is the zebra. Now, as you can see, it goes from zero to 100. And you can move it around and the zebra works, but it doesn't tell you the actual value. So uh, I like to set my zebras for skin tone at 85 I RE for my corrective leaming LUT, but I can only guess that 85 is around here, maybe? So that is a big problem for me. Now, that may not be a problem for you, and I'll explain that in a second. This is the peaking function here, so you can see what's in focus. Luckily, I have focused correctly. Now, this is why the zebra thing might not be a problem for people. A lot of professionals, or people in general, who aren't necessarily professionals, they like to use the false color. There's a false color scale on the side there, and then you know your exposure of all of your different areas of your particular scene. So a lot of people will want to use that and the zebra thing won't be an issue for them. This is to have red, uh, green, and blue channels or off. This right here is just a different aspect ratio. So let's say you wanted to do this one right here, the tick tocking and the booty popping. So your vertical content, you could get that outline there to show you. Now I'll just go back to a regular one. Where is it? There it is. Now this right here, the little magic wand, uh, that is your LUTs. So this can import LUTs, which is fantastic. And as you can see right up here, I have the Leeming uh, S-Log 3 LUT already loaded in. You can load up to five LUTs. I do wish it was a little more. They have some by default, but I of course loaded my old Leeming LUT on there. And now this here is the color temperature of the screen. And uh, I don't know why you would adjust that. I just said it back to 6500 so that it indicates what my camera is seeing. And uh, right here, this one is, uh, if you want to zoom in, okay, let's not do that during inception. We'll all get sick. But that's if you want to punch in. And uh, right here, you have your aspect ratio squeeze, your, your anamorphic de-squeeze. So whatever your anamorphic lens is, uh, you can adjust it so that uh, it looks right on your screen. Now here's an interesting one, see this? It's paused. You can pause the screen where you left it. So that way, maybe you wanna leave the frame or you wanna move a different object. You come back, you have a reference point. Now I wish this was, uh, you could turn down the opacity on this so that you could say sit back uh, on your chair and be in the exact same situation where you were beforehand. You're just, this will give you a good idea, but I think that opacity would have really, it would have made it like that onion skinning that you can have on some of the recorders. I think that would have been uh, really, really great. And this just flips this, uh, the actual frame upside down or mirrored, whatever. And then here is your grid. It's uh, easy as that. Here are your display settings. Let's see, where do I have the display right now? I have it on uh, 48 brightness and I turn the volume all the way down. Of course, my language, I'm leaving on English. This is the device info and these are the wireless settings. This is important here. It's on transmitter right now. So uh, this is how I would have it attached 
to the camera and then transmit the signal to the different iPads or different wireless devices. The pairing, when you want to pair it to other Hollyland devices, the fan control can be auto or mute, which is great. It's a really quiet fan anyway. Really appreciate that. And of course, right here, if you want to switch it to a receiver and, uh, and take the monitor around while you have another wireless transmitter on the camera, switch it to that, it reboots, you're done. That's it, done and done. Now this monitor comes in at $549 and that's extremely reasonable when you think about a high quality wireless system will cost you a fair amount of money and a great monitor will cost you a fair amount of money. You have both in one right here. As I've mentioned, the cheapest thing to do is to get one Mars transmitter and then the Mars M1, but personally, I would like to have two monitors. So I think it's worth it to get two. You pay about $1,100 and then you have such a fantastic setup on set. Very professional, very great. Two good monitors for not that much money and a great wireless transmitting system. So when you look at the drawbacks, I think there's only two. Number one, it is not a recorder. You can buy something like a Ninja V or a Ninja 5, whatever it's called, and you can record things, which is always nice. Uh, but the big thing for me is the zebras. So with the zebras, because it doesn't tell you the number, I always base my exposure. Right now, I'm using 85 zebras on my skin with the Leeming LUT, and I know that I actually use the app to monitor that because the app will tell you the IRE, but the actual monitor won't. So you can get around it by using the app, but personally, I would like to see that on the monitor. Now, maybe you're someone who uses the uh, false color and that you don't even have to worry about the zebras because you are using false color. So that may not be a deal breaker for a lot of people. For me, I really want the zebras. I wrote Hollyland and they told me that the next version of this monitor that comes out will have the number there for the zebras. It'll actually tell you the IRE. So I look forward to that monitor. But for now, if you rely heavily on the number on zebras, you don't want to use the app workaround, then, uh, you know, you may want to hold off until the next generation. Now, if you're somebody, like I said, uses false color, no problem. So let me know down in the comments below what you think. Is this something that you would be interested in? Is the zebra thing a deal breaker or not? Just down below. We'll talk about it. We'll have a nice little discussion. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.